Hello YouTube and welcome back one and all to another Rage video here ladies and gentlemen where tonight ladies and gentlemen in case you're sort of like wondering why I'm wearing my uh, sip lion uh, shape my sip lion uh, sunglasses on is because well you won't actually be able to see it uh, through uh, the video that's in the the bottom corner but I've had to turn down the brightness on my screen rather drastically but despite this I still feel as if like the brightness that comes off the screen is literally far too much for me so I kind of have to that's also a, a little benefit as to why I wear stuff like this and the shades uh, this this pair in particular because one of the benefits this definitely has is that well it darkens uh, it, 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 it's it's much more easier on my eyes. I mean, I, 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 I'm not nearsighted and I certainly don't, you know, have not, sh you know, I don't have, I don't need glasses for anything. But for the best of times, I just kind of like want something that's going to make, you know, there be less pressure on my eyes because that is what we're going to uh, investigate today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it may interest some of you to learn is that to anybody who's ever like, particularly health conscious or owns you know something as something like an iPhone or a smartphone is that every Monday morning at 9 a.m. I get a status like a weekly report from uh, from the database or whatever it's meant to be from my phone that says about how many hours per day in the last week you were on your phone or stuff like that and my it sort of like roughly works out to about like seven hours and 20 minutes a day on average that I spend on my phone doing stuff, and that is an excessively long, large amount of time. Even being at the computer is is, go, is going to have a retrospective effect as well, despite the fact that, you know, it's sort of like rudimentary to what I have to do. So the best sort of like course of action to remedy against this is to turn the darkness down and, you know, wear glasses like this and to stand, well, sit, I should say, a little bit farther back from... The screen itself because today ladies and gentlemen we are going to discover whether or not the phone your phone can hurt you through electromagnetic pollution i believe it said something in like the thumbnail something like electromagnetic smog can uh, damage your eyes so that's why i'm gonna make sure to uh do my best to sort of like take a little bit better care of my eyes and try not to like you know Maybe spend maybe what I should do is like maybe make less videos a day and maybe just pick up a book and just something that's gonna be easier for me to look at, and especially because we're in a in a in a uh, in a nutshell video where everything is actually very bright and very. Uh, I think for this I think I'll just do better without the uh, the glasses for now. Uh, I'll I'll just uh, tr I'll just try this out just to see what happens. I think. The, the the settings I have on my computer are just sort of like just fine for what I have to do. So with all that being said, let's get this show on the road. So if you guys want to check out the original video for yourselves, links will all be in the description down below. Let's begin. Could your phone hurt you in three, two, one and Electricity is all around us all the time. It makes our lives easier, safer, more fun, and most of us never think about it. But is there such a thing as too much electricity? Could the thing that is the foundation of the modern world slowly be killing us? Before we dive deeper, let's try to understand what electricity is and how it affects us. Electricity is the movement of an electric charge. This movement generates electric and magnetic fields that spread out through space and carry energy. We call this phenomenon electromagnetic radiation. Radiation is a word that makes people very nervous, but to radiate just means giving off. Like when the radiator in your house gives off heat in the form of infrared radiation. Different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum correspond to different types. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, x-rays. I'm pretty sure, I know fine well, uh, 
visible. The electromagnetic spectrum is just a name. That I'm going to pull up that song in the end to see if it still exists. Types of radiation, and many of them are perfectly harmless. Some of them can be dangerous, though. Radiation with very short wavelengths, like UV light, X-rays, and gamma rays, are strong enough to rip electrons out of their atoms, which can cause burns and genetic damage. This is what many people have in mind when they hear the term radiation. The rest of the spectrum covers a large range of longer waves, from visible light, infrared, microwaves to radio waves. This is the kind of radiation that's emitted by all sorts of human technology. Mobile phones, Wi-Fi routers, electric power lines and household appliances. This radiation doesn't disrupt molecules in our body. However, some kinds of radiation can stimulate muscles and nerves and can also make the hair on your body vibrate, which can sometimes cause a tingly feeling above certain threshold values. Other kinds are useful for making dinner. Microwaves push the water molecules in your food around, which warms it up. This happens to us all the time. For example, the pleasant warmth you feel at the beach is your skin heating up from exposure to electromagnetic infrared radiation from the sun. We are surrounded by natural and generally harmless sources of electromagnetic radiation all the time and always have been. But since the Industrial Revolution, we have added a lot of it to our immediate environment. The question of whether this is actually dangerous first got public attention when a 1979 study linked leukemia to living near power lines. This particular study was quickly discredited, though. The connection could not be explained, and no direct causal link was confirmed. But once this had been proposed, the idea persisted, and the thousands of studies about possible dangers illustrate that it's still seen as a very real threat. A lot of people claim to be sensitive to the radiation coming from our appliances and cell phones. They report symptoms like headaches, nausea, skin reactions, burning eyes or exhaustion. But those are just effects reported on a day-to-day -day basis. A few studies have found much more unsettling results. Like possible connections between the side of the brain which people use when they're on their phones and the appearance of brain tumors. The question that science is trying to answer is not so much about the acute effects of irradiation. We know, for example, that X-rays cause immediate damage to the DNA in your cells, but that the same doesn't happen with radio waves. The question is rather, is the sort of weak electromagnetic radiation we are constantly surrounded by harmful in the long run as a result of some as yet unknown mechanism? Answering this question was much harder than we first thought. There are thousands of primary sources, reports and statements by an onslaught of different organizations. So we read a lot for this video. You can take a look at our research in the video description. What we found is that this debate is a good example of how science should be communicated and how it shouldn't. Many of the much-cited studies that spread panic about electromagnetic radiation are highly controversial. For example, a series of population studies based on surveys and self-reporting. What this means is, for example, asking brain tumor patients how much they think they used their phone in the last few years. The problem is that people are unreliable. We tend to misremember things or can be influenced easily. On top of this, studies or media reports may be cherry-picking the findings that best suit their opinion or make for the most exciting headline. For example, a study looking for cancer in rats and mice from cell phone radiation. The results seemed to show a connection, but for some reason only in male rats, and none at all in mice. But it was reported as if this study did prove that mobile phone radiation causes cancer. Unfortunately, this is the case for studies with both positive and negative findings on the issue. Another aspect is that the WHO did officially classify radio frequency fields as possibly carcinogenic, but what this actually means is that there are some hints that they might cause cancer, but we can't prove it and that we will keep an eye out. So if we zoom out a bit, what's the big picture? On the whole, there was no consistent evidence in human studies that electromagnetic radiation below exposure value limits causes health problems. There are some statistical associations, but they're mostly weak and inconsistent. If there were any definite cause-effect relations, we would know by now because of all the data we have. 
So, based on the current state of science, should you worry about the radiation from your laptop or cell phone or TV? The answer is no, you shouldn't. But what about the people that say it is harming them? Research showed they could be experiencing what's known as the nocebo effect. If you have a headache and happen to start feeling better right when you switch off your laptop, you might see a connection between those two things. <laughs> Once you get this suspicion, the idea alone that weak radiation might harm you could be the very thing harming you. It's easy to belittle these people. Most of them feel they're not being taken seriously, which makes the situation even worse for them. They should get support, but it's important to be aware that, so far, we have no robust evidence that electricity below safety limits has any negative effect on humans. In the attention economy we live in, talking about unproven dangers can make us neglect things that we know for sure are bad for us. Just one example. Outdoor air pollution is linked to 4.2 million premature deaths each year and is definitely something we could have a real impact on today. Still, to make people feel safe and just to make sure, there are several long-term studies ongoing already. For example, the COSMOS study that will look at the possible health impacts of cell phone use by exactly measuring frequency and duration of phone calls. But while we wait for the conclusion of these long-term studies, there are a lot more pressing problems to focus on. Like, instead of worrying what devices and networks do to your health, consider how they can harm you in other ways. When we shop online, share photos, or watch YouTube videos, we leave a trail of accounts and passwords all over the internet. Radio waves may not hurt us, but people trying to take advantage of our data certainly will. If a service becomes compromised, hackers can get your password. And if you use the same login details anywhere else, they can easily slip into your other accounts. That's why we use Dashlane. It's just one app to stay safe online on any device, operating system, or browser. It creates super strong, unique passwords, but still lets you change them with just one click. Dashlane will even send you breach alerts when sites you use get hacked and includes VPN for every device so you can securely browse from anywhere in the world, like on your home Wi-Fi. Because we want you to have nice things, you can get a 30-day free trial of Dashlane by going to dashlane.com slash Kurzgesagt. If you like it, use the code Kurzgesagt at checkout. The first 200 people will get 10% off. Oh. Well, I think it's fair to say that uh, it, we might be already too late for that. Anyway, that was... Uh, at least we now know how, know how to pronounce uh, Kyrgyzart uh, there, ladies and gentlemen. And that was... Could your phone hurt you? Yes or no? And certainly... The, the conclusion seems very... But, very basic the, the way they uh, try to pronounce the the way they try to present it just if you feel like you're suffering from a headache and that well uh, often aside from just turning the the thing off one of the things I also you also find out very quickly is that if you were to have your phone on quite late at night then you would often feel as if like you couldn't get to sleep for hours because your brain would still be active and almost had to especially if you know sleeping in the dark and you have to like s focus and squint your eyes against a screen which will probably be uh, lit or at least if it's not fully lit then it'll be just enough to sort of like be comparable to uh, your surroundings as it were and one of the things that, that does that is that it stimulates not just your eyes but your brain as well so that you're sort of like still thinking you're still active even though realistically you should have been like asleep like a, a while ago also at times and very similar to whenever you do like a workout or whether or not you've just been in the sun for a bit too long and you start to get head headaches it's most i'd say more often than not it's caused by dehydration and it's usually a get a good point there and then to have a drink of some kind mostly i just go for water and that's definitely actually something as well that also contributes to possibly a, a change in attitude is a change in diet a change in uh, healthier living there are plenty of things that uh, can fix you on this front. Although, from what I found, especially when it comes to, like, say, fo phones or, you know, uh, dear computers and stuff like that, is that you do so take certain measures to make sure that, you know, you're at least trying to take care of your health, like dimming down uh, the screen or spending less time on it. I know, that, I know there are some people who are 
certainly in work who rely on this sort of thing it may it may seem it may come across as far harder to do than at first sight however what i need to emphasize is that you know just make sure you're taking good care of your health that's that's the important thing is that you shouldn't allow yourself to become compromised on matters like these and especially if these problems persist and continue long after you've uh, tried to uh, change your ways and try to uh, fix the problem of electromagnetic pollution and also there's the ha then there's also the painful habit of that if your phone is left on during the night is that one it's a complete waste of electricity especially if how many times have we been there and we've left our computers on all, all through the night it's just it burns electricity it's burns like a huge hole in our wallets for this sort of thing so it's just better more often than not just try not to do these sort of things and you'll be all right it seems simple ladies and gentlemen but then again i sometimes like to imagine and i suspect there'll be enough people out that out there already is that sometimes the most basic principles of all are the most sound in the long run well what do you think guys so anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed this reaction video. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys thought of could your phone hurt you, the electromagnetic pollution question. Please make sure to also like and subscribe to so get daily notifications when my videos come out. And I hope to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye for now.